Time makes sense in small pieces. But when you look at huge stretches of time, it's almost impossible to wrap your head around things. So let's start small with minutes, hours, days. You probably spent the last 24 hours mostly sleeping and working, and you probably wasted a good chunk of yesterday on the internet. Days become weeks, weeks become months, Yes. and then we have a year. Let's look at 2017. France started to train eagles to hunt terrorist drones. A Czech nuclear... What? <laughs> power plant held a bikini contest to pick their new... In Do you know the term bikini? actually came from uh, the island of where like uh, atom bombs were being tested and things like this and people on the internet made a challenge out of eating bleach you know wow what was happening in 2017 the usual stuff let's go back further a kid born in the first year of the 21st century is 18 years old now but the century is still young even if you're not it was largely shaped by the attacks on 9-11, which led to the war in Afghanistan and the invasion of Iraq. In March 2011, the Syrian civil war began and is still ongoing after seven years. Most of us were born in the 20th century, which had the two most devastating wars in human history and the Cold War. For the first time ever, we could destroy ourselves with nuclear weapons, and we almost did, but we also had a space race and left Earth for the first time. The internet was also invented, which led to memes, but also to Facebook and Twitter. The internet has just changed everything. Like, the way people live now is just so different to any other point in history. It's like, what did people do before the internet? Like, as kids, rather than sit on their iPads, they were just like, they had to go outside and climb trees and stuff. They had to think of things to do. <laughs> they had to go down the street, meet up with some kids somehow. And how did parents even know where their kids were? They were all just like outside doing stuff. You just sort of had to go on. It's like the world is so different. Kids and people are so different because of the internet. It's like, it's like, what were we before the internet? We were just like fairly smart monkeys. Now we're like cyber age monkeys. So all in all, we're not sure if this was a good development. The average human lives about 79 years, which covers a good chunk of recent history. The oldest living person on Earth is currently Salino Jaramillo, who was born in 1896, which means that... Is he still alive? ...his birth was closer to Napoleon ruling Europe than to the current day. I saw a cool video about this stuff recently, about how, like, the middle human out of the 117 billion humans to ever lived like the 50 billionth or what is that 58.5 billionth was like back in like 2000 BC before like everything it's like just think about all those human lives like before that time and they had nothing you know like caveman -y people it's just beautiful to think about only 250 years ago the industrial revolution turned the world into a progress machine Farmers became workers, and knowledge became easier to distribute. Around this time, we started the progress that is causing climate change today. Not that long ago, actually. The theory of evolution changed how we saw ourselves and the world we live in. Newton wrote down his theory of gravity. We discovered distant stars and very close bacteria. The 15th century was very eventful. Columbus's discovery of America and the fall of Constantinople marked the end of the Middle Ages. War was all the rage in the Middle Ages, but the number one killer was disease. The Black Plague killed every third European in just six years. Around 2,000 years ago, we set the arbitrary year one of our calendar that most of the world follows today. But to a Roman, the world was already ancient. The Great Pyramids were constructed 4,500 years ago, so... It's amazing to think about all this, the Middle Ages, and it's like, you know, after 14 billion years of <laughs> cosmic evolution. To a Roman, the pyramids were older than the Romans are to us today. So long ago that there were still living mammoths on Earth. A lot of history happened before that even. Around 7,000 years ago, humans began writing things down. Have you seen people still wondering if there's like woolly mammoths roaming around in like the Geiger, in like Russian Siberia and stuff? I don't think there are, but <laughs> it is a big place. 
About 12,000 years ago, human organization exploded. We built our first temple, and around the world, mankind began farming, which enabled the rise of larger... What, are, what were they, like the Silurian stuff? Is that what they're called? Oh, they the, uh, they're the aliens, right? Communities. Our dominance over planet Earth really begins here. Homo sapiens sapiens, the modern human, evolved at least 200,000 years ago. 50,000 years... I believe it's more like 300,000 now. And maybe even 500,000 with all the tools. Years ago, the cognitive revolution expanded our minds and innovation. <laughs> the cognitive revolution. Back then, we shared Earth with at least five other human species that either died out or were killed by us. At least two million years ago, our ancestors already had control over fire and constructed tools from wood and stone. And six million years ago, the last common ancestors of chimpanzees and humans existed. So this graph is all of human history. Our close relative Homo erectus survived 10 times longer than we have existed. This tiny part is the human era. We have to zoom in a lot to even see your lifetime. Still, all of human history is not that long. See but I don't get why the, the video is called Time, the history of history and future of everything. I thought it was going to include the universe because if you've seen Carl Sagan's Cosmos, he condenses all of cosmic history into one calendar year and on that one calendar year all of human history is literally at the last second of you know midnight you know december the 31st before the new year that's all human history if if it was condensed into one cosmic calendar year 65 million years ago the age of the dinosaurs ended in an enormous explosion the dinosaurs ruled the earth for over 165 million years 27 times as long as all humans. That's so long that it means a T-Rex that lived 65 million years ago is closer to us today than to a live Stegosaurus. Also, is it the final second? Can someone fact check me? I believe it's the final second. Dinosaurs in the form of mighty chickens are still around today. Animal life on this planet started 600 million years ago. The earliest animals were fish, and other small simple sea creatures then came insects then reptiles and finally around 200 million years ago mammals joined the party life itself began much further back there is evidence that it appeared up to 4.1 billion years ago for at least 3.5 billion years life consisted only of single-celled organisms these videos are so good 4.5 billion years ago the sun was born from a gigantic imploding gas cloud 60 million years later, Earth formed. In those early years, frequent bombardment by comets and asteroids supplied the Earth with large oceans. But as far as the whole universe goes, there were like astro, like dino killing asteroid impacts every like 15,000 years at that point. Our solar system is pretty new. 13.75 billion years ago, the universe was born. And about half a billion years later, our own galaxy formed from billions of stars. But what came before the Big Bang? The truth is, we don't know. Wait, hold up. Hold up. What did you just say? ...was born, and about half a billion years later, our own galaxy formed from billions of stars. This isn't true. A progenitor of our galaxy. So you've got to remember, over the course of the evolution of the universe, galaxies merge. And so our galaxy, the spiral, we think, you know, galaxy evolution, the way it plays out is that, you know, to get a spiral, you need to have had a bunch of galaxies that have merged, essentially. And uh, in the early universe, it's a much smaller place. It's more dense. Things are closer together. Galaxies were much smaller and more dense. The progenitor of the Milky Way at about that time was about 50 times its size, uh, or maybe even even smaller, actually. At that About a billion years, it was about a 50 50th of the size and uh, more dense and so a, a progenitor at that time I just wanted to insert this little bit something to talk about and then over the course of cosmic history there's lots of galaxies merging and then so our our galaxy has like an evolutionary his, history of like you know all these different galaxies that have merged into it it's just kind of nice to think about but what came before the Big Bang the truth is we don't know and maybe we never will and there you have it the past inflation <laughs> we do know <laughs>
we don't know what happened uh, at the end before the end stages of inflation but we do know inflation it seems like came before the big bang now that's the commonly held view now let's take a look at what we know about the future in roughly one billion years the sun will be so hot that life on earth becomes impossible the death of the sun four billion years later marks I love how we're doing the history of everything now in like two minutes compared to the end of life in the solar system. If we want to have a chance to survive, we need to have ventured to the stars. And yes, cosmic inflation. What happens after that? In the next 100 billion years, most of the bigger stars around will die. The universe becomes dimmer and dimmer. So I think this is a good point before we finish to say, come get the thing I've made. It's called a post quantum VPN, Cal VPN, and you can get it and use it for free for a little bit. And it can protect you from quantum computers. It's a brand new, it's the first one in the world that consumers can use. So you should come support me and my YouTube channel. I would love you if you do. Illuminated only by smaller red and white dwarfs. But they too will eventually burn out. And one day the last star in the universe will die. The universe will turn dark, and at some point, even black holes will evaporate and die. When they do, our universe will reach its final stage, heat death. There's lots to say here. We've done heaps of videos on the end of the universe, so you should go check them out. Nothing changes anymore. The universe is dead. Forever. Eh, there's lots of ideas. We don't know what how this is going to play out. And saying this, nothing changes anymore. Everything is... That is actually not... Well, you know, the lots of ideas for this sorts of time is, you know, things will spontaneously happen. That might have been what kicked off the Big Bang in the first place and inflation and all this stuff. Um, you know, perturbations in some kind of um, really ordered state. So uh, who knows? We, we have no idea. But I'm just saying, and even at this point, you know, you know, if you've heard me talk about Boltzmann brains and things like that, they given a long enough time combined with, you know, the probabilities of quantum theory you can get brains forming forming randomly in in the vacuum so but anyway now you're feeling some pretty weird feelings right now aren't you we are too it's only natural the good news is this is all far far away the only time that actually matters is now that cute girl or boy you like ask them out time is precious make it count I love how we tell ourselves all these things, but we really don't know if any of that stuff that he just said is true. <laughs> like, uh, you know, time is precious, is it? You know, the only thing that matters is now, is it? Really? You know, like photons, I don't experience time. You know, so who knows? Like, maybe this is all predetermined. Maybe, you know, we're running forwards and backwards and we've all been here before. And there's lots of crazy scientific speculation things you can get into. And you might say, oh, that's, that's woo and speculation but at the same time <laughs> you're gonna try and tell yourself that you know the universe is spontaneously forming out of god knows what and uh you know that doesn't sound like just as crazy speculate my friends i think it's fun being here before yes referring to you know the fact this place might be deterministic predetermined that's the the that's the point of view general relativity paints uh, Einstein, have you never heard Einstein say, like, you know, the, the past and the future is but a stubborn illusion? That's because in general relativity, you have this block universe where time, everything is predetermined. One of the questions we get asked the most is how we make animated videos. The so that'll end that video. And just a, one last little thing. It basically says, like, if you had all the preconditions all of the initial conditions i mean of the universe you could calculate what's going to happen so in that way it's predetermined but also it means <laughs> the future is an illusion and the past um <clears throat> but there's deeper things to thinking in that way um <clears throat> i don't think you need to worry about it though because you know quantum theory looks good 